Hi, my name is Patrick, and I know nothing about car care. Just a change in lighting. It's gone a bit moody, a bit dark. No, this is how I have it all the time. All the time? All the time. Yeah. Well, this is because this is a detailing 101 how to compound your car using the ultimate compound. So, this is a video I've really been looking forward to making. I know you've been looking forward to making because we're excited to see the change that this has. Exactly. Um, this is my favorite part of any detail. You know, a lot of people, it's the waxing or the detailing down or the finishing bit. It's the hard work, it's the clean and the prep. Yeah. Now, we've done half of that by claying the surface. Yeah. So, we've not addressed any of the soils and scratches. We've just had a paint feel, so it's nice and smooth, which then means we've got a nice flat surface for it to compact. Absolutely. If you haven't seen that video, then go and check it out. I'll leave a little link somewhere in the description or it can pop up somewhere here. Probably link in the description is best. Anyway, yeah. What we're really covering on here is the basics. And again, if, if you are well into your detailing and you know the basics of car care, maybe it's not the video for you. But if you are new to this, you're new to Meguiar, you're new to our process and products, this can be a great introduction to our different shampoos, different processes, and little things like two bucket method and grit guards. The reason this is such a hero product, um, one, it's a consumer product, it's not a pro product, so yeah. anyone can get this and use it. Two, it's just a, it's a complete swell layer. Um, that's because it has the micro abrasives in it to not only hit the swells and scratches, to put to refine the paint as well. Okay. Um, so that means that as you're using it, you know, you're not just kind of hammering it with a compound. The yeah. polishing oils in this are going to give it that gloss. Wow. The right. phone's on silent. So, welcome as, back. As, as well welcome as, back. As well as being as a reviver, it's also a refiner as well. Um, so. Like I say, we are going to be addressing the swells and scratches, but if you have faded paint, so if you have a car that's, you know, you know, uh, was red and now is now pink or yellow or anything like that, um, if you have a very tired paint and very faded, this has paint cleaners in to revive that as well. Right. So it's going to remove stains as well if you've got bird, you know, bird etching from bird lime residue. Bird oh, crap. Bird. I just don't like bird, saying it. Bird, bird, bird. Um, so if you have etch, like stains that have eaten into the clear coat, this is when you use a mechanical cleaner. Okay. Now I'm, th I, this car has not had this ever, like the swells on this are mental, and we'll show you what I mean by swells and scratches. Mm -hmm. It's quite simple, um, but we are gonna show you that. So, without further ado, I'm so excited for this. Welcome back to Detailing 101. Welcome back to how to remove your swells and scratches. With... Don't. Do I not? Okay. When we talk about swells and scratches, what do you actually mean? How are they formed? How are they created? So they, they can be formed in many different ways. It could be someone physically scratching the paint, um, you know, using something contaminated. So if you've got a bit of grit or stone or grime in your cloth and you're wiping it down, that's going to scratch the paint. But they also just happen over time, um, just over wash techniques. Now, some people refer to them as kind of love marks for the paint because you wipe the car down so much, you're, yeah. you're constantly rubbing against the clear coat and that's scuffing it and, and, and marking it. Um, like I say, it could be, you know, you're leaving the car outside and a, and a cat walks all over the paint. That's gonna cause scratches and swells because it's a sharp object running across the paint. Right. So it's a bit of a weird thing. So they are subsurface defects, that's what they are. So if, you're, if that's your paint, a scratch and swell is something that's eaten into the surface of the paint. Now you want to bring everything to the same level to make sure that they're gone. Now I can clearly see that like there's a lot of a lot of scratches on the bonnet, especially over here as well. There's real swirly marks over here. On the roof as well, there's some pretty bad ones. What it is actually is there's scratches scratches and marks going every way possible, but the way the light hits it gives it the appearance. So whenever people say that you should never apply wax in circular motions or wipe car, it doesn't matter. Fine. Right, well, I think we should uh, do the first thing, which is I don't know. What's the first thing? So with 
we've evaluated the surface, now it's choosing the right product. So like I said, we've evaluated the surface and we've also done a test panel um, using our MT320 and various pads. Um, so we have like to go to, we'd normally say, try the yellow polishing pad because you don't always start with the most aggressive. Okay, so what in terms of aggression, which is what? So the most aggressive, or the most efficient at removing squirrels and scratches is your cutting pad. Okay. And then the kind of medium ground is our more refining yellow polishing pad. Okay. Now normally we would start with the yellow pad, yep. and we have done. We found it wasn't as efficient as removing the scratching and swirls as the red one was. So that's why we're going to drive, delve straight into using that one. Perfect. So if you've never used a machine polisher before, that's okay because I'm very new to this. I think I've used one once and I wasn't very good. So this is going to be, again, a new learning process for me and for you. What's great about the Ultimate Compound is that you can actually use it by hand applying stuff. So if you get a microfiber pad, apply the compound onto it. It's the same process, just with your hand. But obviously for this car, um, the scratch and swells is quite bad. So we are going to use the machine, but it's not a complicated process. It might be scary, but it's not going to be. Mm -hmm. Or Dell has assured me it's not going to be scary. Definitely. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to do use the machine today, but I just wanted to let you know that you can use a hand applicator pad as well um, to apply the Osmot compound and help remove those scratches and swells. damage you'll ever do with machine polisher especially ours is by dropping it on the paint using a DA machine means you're using less speed and less pressure okay means you can take your time with the paint the slower you go the quicker it gets done I know it sounds quite strange but we'll put it into practice and you can see exactly what we mean before doing anything my little trick with these pads is if you feel that Patrick it's quite hard isn't it yeah it's not yeah yeah I say it's pretty it's pretty it's very hard so what I do before I do anything kind of tear it up oh wow yeah so what this does is softens the pore kind of opens the pores up of the pad yeah which means it doesn't dramatically change it but you'll see oh yeah but it makes it a bit more porous it means it's going to absorb yeah. more product absolutely yeah place it nice and center on the machine yeah okay so as you can see i put a fair bit of product on there but what i do you know how i primed the even coat pad? Yes. I'm doing exactly the same with this. So what this is doing is keeping the pad cool and lubricated, which means you can do longer buffing cycles. And we're all tempted sometimes just to put a cross on there or like some dots on yeah. their own. But what you have is a lot of exposed fibers rubbing on your paintwork. This way you're not actually exposing any of the Exactly that. So the bare pad to the paint. Exactly that. Everything's nice and lubricated, which means we've constantly got product working the surface. Yeah. Now we've primed the pad. We only ever do this once. Per panel or per section, I like to use five little dots. Okay. Pea sized dots like that. Is that all you need? All you need per section. So, <clears throat> as you can see, I've got the cable over my shoulder. Yep. This way it keeps it away from the paintwork. Never give yourself too much to do. So if you're looking at this bonnet now, yeah. I'd probably break this centre bit down into four sections. Okay. Like that. And then I'll do these in two. So we're just going to work on kind of this square yep, panel Yeah, it's going to work here. Perfect. Yep. So, this is how I personally do it. You don't have to do it like this, but this is just showing you how I like to do it. Okay. I like to mark out my surface area like this yeah and then you know how we've been priming the pads yeah I now want to prime the surface so I'm going to set the speed to the slowest on the machine okay I'm just going to spread the product when you say slowest on the machine what does that actually mean so it's OPM oscillations per minute so the slowest speed on this machine is 3 okay or 30 and then it goes way up 75 look so, as we've primed the pad, 
we've now primed the surface. This means everywhere has an equal share of product. Yeah. yeah. So you see we have swirl and defect removal here. Yeah. Four eight to five eight. So I'm gonna go flat bang in the middle of those. This is my kind of go-to speed for swell removal, yeah? Okay. And what we're gonna do next, and I know you've heard this a million times, Patrick, but we're gonna go up and down, and left and right, exactly what we've been doing the with the other processes. Affair. Yeah, so this is what I like to call the hashtag polishing. Now we've been doing this when wiping detailer off, when claying, it's just a nice regime to get into. This hand is my balance. That's making sure that this pad is always flat on the surface. Okay. This means you won't get zigzag lines or traces on the paint. Yeah. This hand is my guide. This is telling the machine where to go. Right. Yep. Yeah. And at no point am I adding any additional pressure. Just now, the you, weight of if, the... Yeah, if you feel that, it's a pretty heavy machine, yeah, it's right? pretty hefty. Yeah. So that's all you need. Golden rule. Chill out. You know, don't don't need to like hold on for dear life, you know, just nice and relaxed because Oh there, daddy. Exactly. Because it is a dual action polisher, it's got two movements going at the same time. So you are gonna feel that vibration. Yeah. Now I've been doing it for too long and I'm dead inside, so I don't feel <laughs> it. But doing it for the first time, people hold on really tight yeah. and they feel that vibration all the way through their arms. So the more relaxed you are, the easier it is to get done. Cool. Now see, I wanna be going about an inch inch per second. Slow process. Very slow. The slower you go, the faster it gets done. Nice one. So you'll notice that whenever starting and stopping the machine, always do it on the panel because we don't want to be throwing product everywhere. You've already done a job of cleaning the car. You don't want to constantly be chasing product everywhere. Yeah, yep. Absolutely. Let's Cheeky tip it. number one, prime the pad so that the pad's got an even coat everywhere and also the paint then gets an even coat. Cheeky tip number two, always start and stop the machine. machine on the panel. Cheeky number tip three is prime the paint so that everywhere on the paint that you're working um, gets a fair share of the product. And cheeky tip number four. Always listen to Dale. Always listen to Dale, that's the one. Ooh. Oh my God. So that's just one pass. Now, can you do that more than once then? Yep, because it's micro-abrasive, it means we, if you're not happy after the first pass, it means after the second and third, you will see an improvement. That is unbelievable. How good does that look, Dale? Yeah, that's killer. Now, the thing with compound is, sometimes if you're working the surface, you can get a bit of compound haze. That's perfectly fine. Don't be worried if it's left a bit of a cloud. Right, okay. That's when we move on to our next step, which is the polishing, which right. is the refining. So, revive the paint, then refine it. So don't worry about if you see hazing after compounding, yep. it's perfectly normal. So you say stamp up where you want to work. Correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then slower speed, correct? Yep. And just spread the product. Mm -hmm. Nice and quick. Making sure I stopped it on the, uh, the old panel. Then, you go in between 4.8 and 5.8. And the same process, up and down, left and right, yeah? Correct. You know if it's flat, if you get these even spread. Now, if you make tiny adjustments, see how it stops spinning? Yeah. So keeping that nice and flat, you can see the white lines right, okay. constantly spinning. Gotcha. Wipe it off. Size and bust it away. Oh, oh, it looks so good. So, like you said, there is some haze in us, but you said the polishing can just completely the polish is going to re refine that, yeah. But you can definitely see that all the swirls around there are definitely reduced and almost gone entirely in the bit that we've just done. Oh, it looks so good. That was awesome. Definitely wasn't on my phone. Definitely weren't on your phone. Dale, you're supposed to be teaching me here. <laughs> so you can really see the reduction of the swirls and scratches. They're not completely gone, but like I said, this car is, uh, it's diabolical in terms of, of that. So, right, let's do the rest of the car. It's exciting, I like it. And we show the finished product afterwards. video 
we're going to show you mainly the bonnet. If we were to do the whole car, I've done the roof and a couple of bits that I want to try and get done as well. Um, but if we were to do the whole car, we'd have been here for absolute hours and we've got other videos to film. But Dale has worked his magic on the bonnet and it's, it's a different, it actually looks like a different colour. Yeah, so what, what happens is when you remove those scratches and swirls, scratches and swirls, because it's marks on a clear coat, will naturally grey a colour. Um, so if you look on the wings, what we've not touched, you'll notice that it looks like a different shade. It looks like it's been painted differently. Yeah. What you're doing, um, the easiest way of kind of explaining it is that, you know when you go from standard definition to high definition? Yeah. It's like exactly what we're doing with your paint. So like I said, we're taking that grayness out and we're allowing to, that fleck to really pop and come through the paint. So you get the real true magnification yeah. of oh, the Yeah, oh here's the mega difference. Like that looks kind of gray matty. This really magnifies the flake in the paint. Oh, awesome. It's very difficult to see inside or like through the camera, but to the natural eye, it's, it's a completely different color, like completely different. All the swirls that were there that were visible are now not visible. Um, it's got a lot of scratches on it. That's my own problem. I need to fix and get painted, sorted out. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I know I have, I'm very sweaty and very hot. So if you do have any more questions about our products or processes, feel free to use the contact us page on our website or contact us directly through YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, like I say, anything to do with these videos or anything else to do with McGuire's products, feel free to contact us. And comment down below what you think of the bonnet and what it looks like before and after. So thanks for watching. See you next video for another episode on Tanum. Detailing 101. <laughs>